If you're a Chicago-based real estate investor and you are having trouble hitting the cash flow numbers you want on your investments, I want you to pay attention to this video till the end. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV, right? I help you guys start, build, grow your real estate portfolios, okay? And I'm specifically talking to the investors out there in the Chicago land area, right? It is hard to hit the cash flow goals you once were achieving in 2021. Now, it's hard everywhere, right? It's hard everywhere in the United States of America because pricing is way up, right? The real estate market, we are in a seller's market. It is hard to hit our numbers, guys. I think a lot of us, a lot of us investors, we got we got freaking greedy coming out of that recession, right? Like, dude, we were just gobbling up properties at pennies on the dollar, and I think we got a little greedy. We got accustomed to that, right? It's not sustainable, right? Okay? So pricing, higher now, Okay? We're getting squeezed as investors, so we have to get creative. We have to look uh, to new markets, new areas to make that money, right? And that's what my client's doing. Roman is an investor from Chicago, and he's partnered with Holton Wise to build a real estate portfolio in the Midwest, specifically Cleveland, because the pricing in Cleveland is still incredibly cheap. Now, there's a high demand in Cleveland. A lot of people want to buy property in Cleveland, but the price points, the price-to-rent ratios, the returns you can achieve – that's why. It's ridiculous compared to places like Chicago. But just because the properties are in Cleveland are cheap, folks, doesn't mean you can just hop on Zillow and just fucking throw bids out there and just fucking buy them all, right? No. Even though the stakes are low, even though the prices are low, you can still lose your ass investing in these neighborhoods. Some are very dangerous. Uh, sometimes you might see a property looking at it from the perspective of someone who's in Chicago, and you're like, dude, you could buy a friggin' duplex in Cleveland for 40 k We can never do that in Chicago. It's a must. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a can't lose. Let me just buy it. And then you find out the comps say that that neighborhood duplexes should only be like 20 k right? You screwed up, dude. That's what I do. I help you guys navigate the minefield that is investing in a new neighborhood, a new market, a new state. And then after that, my team, we are your boots on the ground, right? Property management, maintenance, construction, insurance, title, leasing. I don't know if I left it out, but if you need to do it as a real estate investor, my team will help you do it. I have sold over $200 million worth of this stuff, and I run the largest scattered site real estate portfolio in the market. So if you are not convinced just yet, hit that subscribe button. Keep watching what we have going on. If you are thinking you might want to move forward and talk to us, work with us like Roman is doing, I want you to hit my team up, sales at HoltonWise.com. Give us your number. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to do a deep dive on a property that I think will be perfect for you, Roman. But first, let's do a quick commercial break. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's take a look at the numbers on this particular property, okay? 2978 West 32nd, Cleveland 44113. Two days on the market. Priced at $95,000. I think $95,000 is the minimum you're going to need to pay to take this one down. We are getting multiple offers on pretty much all Cleveland multifamily properties. This one is going to be no different. It appears to be in pretty nice shape, too. I like that it's got the vinyl siding, by the way. Vinyl siding is great, especially because uh, all these homes in Cleveland built well before 1978, so you can have potential lead-based paint issues, right? We have two tenants already in there. Uh, they're both paying below market rent, right? We're getting a total of $1,100, $550 each unit, long-term Month-to-month -month tenants. I see no reason why they wouldn't be long-term, though, right? Their rent's super-duper cheap, right? This looks like somebody's grandma lives in this one. Those, uh, you know, all those, like, old-school, dated-looking fixtures. That's great. She keeps a really uh, really clean unit, though. This looks like a, a hell of a tenant, man. This looks like somebody who you'd want to be your tenant, right? Here's the other unit, also looking like it's in pretty good shape, right? Nothing, like, uh, amazing, but, you know, just decently clean units. Got a newer hot water tank right there. 
Another newer hot water tank right there. Those are good, right? Brand new furnaces too, right? These uh, these big ticket items, right? This is a lot of savings uh, for the long haul, right? Those two furnaces, they're going to last probably another 30 years, right? It's 3K a pop. Those two hot water tanks, they're probably going to last another 15 years, right? That is 1K a pop, right? It's a pretty damn nice property. Now, as far as the actual market rents go, they're actually much higher too. 850 and 750 is what we should be getting in rent, right? Because one of those units is actually a 3 1, the other is a 2 1, right? So that'd be 1600 a month, 19200 a year. Now, even though, even though the hot water tanks are new, the furnaces are new, we still are going to save $960 a year for CapEx. We're going to, you know, pretend you're not really getting that money. Yes, it's coming back to you, but you're going to hold that, right? Hold that in another account. Don't consider that your cash flow, right? Because eventually, you're going to have to replace those things, and you're going to have to pay that money. So over the long haul, though, this should, in my opinion, have an NOI of 9762 And if you're lucky enough to pick it up at 95 k you only need to put down 23750 Bank kicks in 71 That'd be a 26% cash-on-cash return projection if you got those tenants up to market rate. Could you get them up to market rate uh, without turning them over? Yes, it's possible. Is it guaranteed? No, of course not, dude. They're both only paying friggin' 550 right now. My advice, do it slowly. You look like you got two great, clean, long-term tenants. In my opinion, you don't want them going anywhere, right? You want to keep them in there because you're going to have to do a five to $10,000 unit turn uh, to get them spruced up, to get them ready for market rent if you lose both these people, right? So maybe the first year you keep the rent the same. Then the second year you go up. You go up 50, another 50, another 50. As for the neighborhood, right, this is what I would consider to be a D-grade neighborhood. It's very important you understand that. This is a D-grade neighborhood. Now, as far as uh, nicer neighborhoods, right, like this over here, this is Tremont, okay, Tremont. But Tremont doesn't get really nice to, like, way up here, right? So, <clears throat> like... Here is the map. Like, this is technically where Tremont starts, but it's like the further up you go is really nice. Same thing with Ohio City, right? So this is very much a D-grade neighborhood. You do have to understand that's a D-grade neighborhood. In my opinion, D-grade neighborhoods like this, they work really well with Section 8 tenants, right? Because the biggest risk of a D-grade neighborhood is your tenants not being able to pay rent. However, in this particular property, we appear to have really good tenants you can just kind of tell based on how nice they treat their unit right so it doesn't look like they're missing payments it doesn't look like they're jacking the house up right so those are some risks that you get with d-grade assets that appears we might not have in this particular property so all the more reason you don't get blinded by that 26 percent projection right and you try to keep those tenants in there if you do turn one over in your efforts uh to, to get it up to market rent or just to uh, you know, just as an owner of a property because, you know, nobody lives in your house forever. That's just not how this game works. If that happens, you want to go Section 8, right? Very important you go Section 8 because you are definitely not getting, like, the ultra-trendy, high-credit score tenants that you would receive in Tremont. Not over here. Definitely a D-grade neighborhood, but an absolute nice investment, in my opinion, would be a solid buy. Again, 95 k is the minimum I think you need to offer. I guarantee you there's going to be multiple bids on this one. You may want to consider going above list price. I'll leave that to you to tell me how high above list price you really want to go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.